Welcome back to Don't Panic Gaming. I'm your boy Panic. On this channel, we cover the latest gaming news and updates, reviews, let's plays, and guides. So, that's like something you're interested in. Please consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe. Thank you. In today's video, we'll be covering practical and simple automation. So, let's go ahead and jump right in. So, when you first start off, one of the early things that you'll probably want to automate is the oxygen diffuser. Let's go ahead and put that down like so. Let's give it some power. I like could just uh, let this run by itself and it'll reach max pressure at about 1800 grams, uh, which is fine. But if you want to like save some power and also save a little algae, you can throw down um, at most sensor, put it right above it like so. Put automation wire. And we'll set this to about 1200 grams above. Once it reaches 1200 air pressure in the surrounding area, it'll shut itself off. And that's a nice way to save some power and some algae in the beginning of the game. One of the next things I want to talk about is lights. So when you're playing the game, it can be very easy to forget that they're living in darkness. We can tell by the light the light sources that are around the base. Now our dupes actually like to work in light. When you give them a light source, they'll get a 15% bonus to their work speed. You can tell from the info card here, it'll show up as a buff um, in their status. But if you don't want to waste uh, the power, and they don't use that much power, they only usually use 10 watts, but it can add up if you have a bunch of lights all over. One of the neat things you can do if you don't want to waste power is use a motion sensor. So we'll set up a little light source here. Make sure we get some power. We'll use a motion sensor right, right here. We'll spin this around with some automation and this will cut the light off and on whenever a duplicate is within range. So if we grab this bit here and we make it run over here, the light will shut, turn itself on and then she'll get a nice little bonus if she's working on something. And then if she walks away, it'll turn itself off. So that's a nice little trick to use. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is smart batteries. Now, smart batteries are pretty straightforward, but when you're starting off, uh, it might it might be a little hard to, to know how to use them. So basically, you'll have your power source. We'll just use a coal generator. And you'll get your smart battery after you do some research. So right here under the research tree, now when you get the smart battery, you have to pair this with a couple of things. You'll need a smart battery and you also need the automation wire. But to get the automation wire, you're going to need to smelt some ore. And to do that, you'll need the rock crusher. So once you get these three items, then you can Go ahead and get the smart battery all up and running. So I'll put that down like so. I'll give it some power. Well, some wiring, I mean. And we'll give it some automation here. Now what this will do is the coal generator will just keep running and running. And if you don't have a smart battery connected to it, if you just have one of these regular batteries, The cold general will just keep running forever and ever and ever. It won't stop. But if, with a smart battery, once the battery is full, it'll shut the generator off. It'll set this about 90 and 25%. All right, now our dupes come in, fill up the generator. Now the battery will just, will just charge up until it reaches the max level. We'll go ahead and set that to 100. Now, next thing I want to talk about is gas pumps and how to fill up gas tanks. 
So. Iron pumps. We throw down a gas pump. And you want to suck up some whatever gas you have in the area. But you want to fill it into tank. Like so. And give us some vent. And you want to send that gas out somewhere. It'll fill up the tank, but it'll keep going out the pipe and the tank will never actually fill up. So to remedy that, all we need to do is set a knock gate like so. And you're going to need gas shut off valve. Break it right there. Yeah, like that. And give it automation. Add it to the tank and connect that to the shutoff. And this also needs some power. So we'll use. We'll use our coal generator. And then you set your gas tank to, I usually set to about 90, 50. It'll shut this valve off and this part of the, um, the pipe will, will stop and then it'll allow the gas tank to fill up to whatever parameters you set. And then once it reaches, once it reaches the max that you set, so for this example, we have it set to 90. Once it reaches 90, then the, the gas shut off will release and then the gas will go out to wherever you want it to go. And then once it, once it depletes to 50, the, the gas shut off will stop and then it'll allow the gas tank to fill back up. So that's a nice little thing to do if you wanna fill up your gas tanks without like losing it to wherever you're trying to send it to. Now this trick can also be used for liquid tanks. We have our liquid pump here. And we go ahead and set it into wall. And we'll give it some water. And the liquid tank. And we'll do the exact same method. Well, on this example, I'll use a liquid valve because I want to select how much water I send to it. So I'll connect to there, connect to there. And we'll have our liquid shut off. Actually, I think I need some space. Our knot gate. Liquid shut off. Yeah. Put it there. Then this here. And we'll make a little extra area for to send it to. We'll send it right here. We'll set this to 5,000. And we'll give us some automation. Connect this to that, connect to this. And we'll set the tank to whatever you want. Be 90, 50. Good starting point. The tank will fill up to 90 and then it'll release. And then it'll keep going until it depletes past 50, then it'll stop and then fill the tank up some more. Uh, in this example, I'll just set this to five. And it's the 10. Make sure we get some power. And this part of the pipe will stop from the liquid shut off, allowing the tank to fill up. And then once it reaches the max, so whatever you set, the shut off will release and it'll let the water come out. 
Well, that's a nice trick to make your to get your tanks to fill up. Now, next thing I want to talk about is oil refineries. So the oil refinery can be found here. Um, when you set this up, it's usually a good idea to put it in a code biome, like so, because this thing really heats up. It generates uh, 10 KDTUs of heat. And not only that, but it spits out natural gas, which is also very hot. It'll be at least 75 degrees or hotter, depending on um, how, mu how hot the crude oil that you sent to it. So we'll put that there. Now the main thing I want to show with the, the oil refinery is... If you don't automate this, then your dupes will just keep coming back and forth and wasting time. But if you put down a, a liquid storage and you give it some automation, we'll connect this to automation wire and we'll set this to 9050. As your dupes um, fill this up, It'll just stop at 90 and then once it reaches 90, then they'll, then they'll just go back to doing their regular work. But once it depletes past 50, they'll just stay here and keep filling it up. And then they will just, this will prevent them from running back and forth. Just make sure that you have one of your dupes, um, on their priorities to have operating set to a higher priority. That, that way it'll keep doing it. Another thing that I want to show is with the oil refinery, because it spits out natural gas, you'll want to put a gas pump above it. I'll just put it right above the, the smokestack and we'll give it some automation. Gas element sensor. We'll put that there. We'll set this to natural gas. Now I like to put, um, a gas filter on this to make sure that I capture the, the natural gas and send it to wherever I want to send it. You can send it to um, natural gas generator if you want to use some extra power. You can send it to a uh, gas range. So what you do, you can use a regular gas filter. But the thing with this one is it uses 120 watts of power. So what I like to do is I'll just use this gas pipe element sensor. We'll put it right here and I'll use a gas shut off. Put it right there. And we'll get our pipes. We'll run this through the, the gas sensor and all the gas that comes out the green output will be the natural gas and then everything else will be whatever else the gas will come straight through the input. Make sure we set this to natural gas. Give us some automation here. Don't need some power. And we'll just simulate the natural gas being sent to it. So, let's see. Natural gas. Then I'll turn this on. And I'll send a natural gas to the this filter and everything else will go this go this way. So that's that's a good thing about using the filter like this because this this only uses 10 watts of power. Whereas the other one is 120 and it can really start to add up. Now, next thing I want to talk about is incubators. Now, when you have your, your ranches and you're having, you have your, um, your eggs and you want to grow, grow them faster, you'll throw them in your incubators. No. When you're new and you're starting off, you might think that you need 
to have the egg in the incubator have it powered the entire time but you actually don't need to do that that's a lot of waste of power because if you see you can see that these things use 240 watts of power for each one that can always that can really, um, have a drain on your power so what you want to do and do some automation we'll use a cycle sensor we'll put it here automation give it some power And we'll spawn some eggs in. We'll go some hatchlings. Now, when you have a rancher, he'll he'll come along and he'll hug the, the incubator and he'll give it this buff called lullaby. And the buff will increase its growth rate by 400%. But you don't actually need the eggs um, sitting in here, well, you don't need the incubators being powered the entire time. You just what you basically need is the buff that makes them grow faster. So to save power, we'll use this cycle sensor, and we'll set this to about. I usually like to set it to about fifteen to twenty-five percent, which is about a quarter of the day. And what you do is you look at your rancher. And let's say, for example, he sleeps during the night and he gives up during the, the morning time here. So you want to set the timer to exactly when he wakes up at night. So if you look at this dark part here, this is going to be nighttime. And this uh, marker here is the, the current time and it travels on counterclockwise, which actually should do clockwise would make a lot more sense, but the green part is the part where the, um, the incubators is actually turned on. So if we move this around, we see it turns it off. And we move the green part back to the marker, it turns it back on. But let's say your your rancher wakes up right after right after the nighttime, which these moons represents the nighttime. So we set it here that's exactly when he wakes up and then it'll the incubator be on this entire time i like to like use a little the little buffer like right be like a little bit before he wakes up so i'll come on this way give him like a few a few seconds before it actually wakes up and then i'll set uh, my incubators to about the priority to about six or seven to make sure that's the first thing he does when he wakes up. That way he'll come along, he'll hug the tank, sing to it and give it the buff lullaby. You'll get your 400% and then the tank will turn off and you'll save 240 per tank, uh, incubator tank. And you won't have a, it won't be a drain on everything else. So that's a nice little trick to do. So the next thing I want to talk about is farms and how to automate them. So. Go ahead, throw down some farm tiles. And let's say we want to plant something like millwood. Give it some, spawn in some seeds. So, once you get to about mid game and you have one of your dupes unlock mechatronic engineering. That will give them the ability to use auto sweepers. So under here, in the, under the shipping tab, you'll find your auto sweeper. So you'll set this up like so. You'll put it over your farms, and you'll give it um, conveyor loader. So you'll connect it to your rails. And you'll send this easy. You'll send this to straight to like your kitchen, wherever you have your kitchen set up. 
Oh, so you have your kitchen up here somewhere. So drop down the stove. I'll go to the refrigerator. And let's put mill ice here. And we'll be cook we'll turn our mill ice into pickle mill. They'll send your conveyor rails up to wherever your kitchen is. Like so. And you can just use a conveyor chute. Oops. And put down a all super here. Make sure we give it some power. And as you're, um, hold on, we need some power here too. Okay. And as your farms grow and your, your farmer comes along and ranch, um, harvest everything, all super will pick everything up and send it straight to your, uh, your kitchen. All you have to do is make sure you set this to whatever you want to pick up. So in our case, we want to pick up mill lice. So we'll go ahead and select mill lice. So, so mill lice will be a uh, farm. The super will pick it up, send it along. Now okay. come out and drop off the chute. And then the other, the next auto sweeper. Well, our dupes are doing all the work. They're very enthusiastic. Hold on. Get these girls out of here. Okay. Yeah, I'll go over there. Okay, let's try this again. Mill lights will be spawned here. It'll go up our conveyor chute. And then the auto sweeper automatically put it in um, the stove, the electric grill, and thing anything that's left over, it'll put it in um, the refrigerator. This one's still sitting there because one of our dupes is trying to put it put it inside. And then once whatever you're cooking is finished, you can have it shipped to your refrigeration area. So let's see. We need another conveyor loader. We'll put that there. So let's say refrigeration is down here somewhere. Put that there. You can have another automation auto sweeper in here so it can automatically put the food in there. We'll set that to pickle mill. And we'll spawn some pickles. They'll send it down the rails. And I'll also automatically put it into your refrigerators. So that's how you automate farming. Now the last thing I want to talk about is power. And how to make it automatically shut off. So we'll go ahead and set up some coal generators. And we'll give it a smart battery. We'll connect it with heavy watt wire. Make sure we we'll give it some automation. And we'll set this to about 25. Okay. Now we'll need an extra floor. Just like that. And we'll put down some smart batteries. two spaces like that and in between we'll put power transformers now how you set this up is um you'll need some joint uh joint plates let's make a spot there there and there 
Okay. Set that there. There like so. We'll run our heavy watt wire from the battery. All the way across like this. And then we'll connect each joint plate. Like so. Clean that up. And then you connect it to your transformer. And then you connect your transformer to the battery. Now, one little thing, when you're doing a power transformer, this can be easily missed by new players, is the power transformer has two sides. It has the big side and it has the small side. Pause real quick. Now, this is the big side. This is where you'll put your, your heavy watt wire. And you also put your uh, heavy watt conductive wire. And then you have your small side. This is where you'll put your small wire and also your conductive wire. So that can be easily missed by new players in the beginning of the game. Well, first we need power shut off. Now you'll put your power shut off right in between uh, joint plates right here. The joint plates in the transformers. Get rid of that. And then when you do your automation wire, you connect it between the smart battery and the power shut off. Like so. And then you set your batteries. Let's say we're going to shut off at 25%. And we're going to need some power drain. So let's give it another four. We'll make this, um, make that one. We'll make that two. And we'll make this three. Okay. So. All right, perfect. So what I want to show the automation is as the batteries deplete power and fill back up, they'll connect and disconnect themselves from the main power spine. Right, so you can see these two batteries have connected themselves to the main power spine. And so they're drawing power from the main battery. Uh, the main battery is low, so it's turning its generators back on to fill itself back up. And then you see how this one is turned red, it's disconnected itself from the main power spine. Now this battery is full, so it's disconnected itself from the main power spine. This one's connected itself to the main power spine, so now it's drawing power from the main battery to fill itself back up. And as this depletes, then I'll turn the generators back on. I'll just keep doing this loop over and over. That that's a nice little trick to to not be not be so stressful on your your power. Now, only thing with this trick is you have to monitor the wires on a potential load. You have to make sure that it doesn't go over the 1000 watts or else your, your wires will start to break. That's the only thing with putting the, um, the battery after the power transformer. But that's the only way you can get this method to work. Because if you put it the opposite way, if you put the transformer from the battery, yes, your, yes, your wires will just go up to 1000 watts and you won't have to worry about your wires breaking but then you won't have the benefit of using uh this nice automation method so i like to use in this and it's not really that hard to keep track of which how much uh power your your wires are drawing so i like to do that so that completes this guys so if this was helpful please consider leaving a like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next video thanks